Yeah, well, there's issues that the city is dealing with directly right now, and then there's issues where the city is being asked to weigh in on, you know, certain kind of critical new legislation in the state legislature. So, you know, I'm still very passionate about the TexRail issue and ensuring that TexRail never comes through the city of Colleyville. I've had a lot of people in the community, you know, accuse me of taking on an issue that the city actually can't control. But what's interesting about that is the city in 2009 unanimously passed a resolution that supported commuter rail, taxpayer funded commuter rail, and advanced a tax idea so that um, through you know, gas, increased gasoline taxes, um, roadway impact fees, anything basically having to do with a vehicle, we would pay for this project. What most people don't understand about TexRail is we are talking about 50 plus diesel trains, not light rail, a day coming through Colleyville at 70 miles an hour right along our primary pathway system. And, and the other dirty secret about TexRail is it doesn't solve a traffic problem. Their own environmental study, their own, straight out of their data, says that it will not relieve any traffic congestion in the Metroplex. And it solves no environmental problem because it's heavy diesel rail. So what I want people in Colleyville to understand is that the city does have an active role in dealing with this issue. When it's not good for Colleyville, we should not be forced to have to accommodate outside interests like Fort Worth and the Fort Worth Transportation Authority simply to advance their economic development. And that's what this project is. It's terrible for our city and I need more support on city council to actually use every possible tactic that we can politically and um, not just politically but legally to kill this project. The project's not funded. You know, people will say that the train's coming no matter what, but it's not true. President Obama allocated $100 million in his 2016 budget for TexRail. He's a big fan of this project. There's still $350 million short on the federal funding side. They need $100 million worth of state funding, and I have a commitment from most of our state legislators, um, our local state legislators, that they absolutely will oppose any attempt you know, for, for, the, for the NETCOG or for the RTC or for the T to acquire state funding for TexRail. So they got a long way to go. This is Fort Worth and Grapevine driving this. It's bad for Colleyville, and we shouldn't have to participate. It's, it's obviously important that, you know, we work in a productive way, you know, with our regional partners, but that doesn't mean that we have to be run over by them. And again, back to this first filter, is it good for Colleyville? Is it good for Colleyville residents? Is it good for Colleyville businesses? If the answer to those questions is no, 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 then we have every right you know, to, to, to challenge our regional partners or these quasi-regional government authorities um, like the NETCOG and, and the RTC. Um, that's our first responsibility. And part of the challenge that we have today, the cultural challenge at City Hall, is that we have a lot of long-term incumbents that are just completely integrated into that regional system and into the regional politics. And they're all very codependent on each other. So that's county judges, county commissioners, the, the T, the RTC. Um, those relationships are far too cozy. And I, and I fundamentally believe that, you know, we are abandoning our responsibility to the people that live here because we're abdicating that responsibility to other cities and other interests. And that's what we need to change.